Welcome to Face Hammer, episode 102. It is me, Russ the Face, and I'm joined by my co host, Byron. Small heads, <laughs> big helmet. Was that the thing? <laughs> or, um, and, uh, and friend of the show and, uh, Realm Hammer creator, uh, Tom Battle Roll Hewitt or Chewy. Hello. Hi, welcome. How's everyone doing? I'm all right. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm, we're sat, I'm sat in my geek pit while it's nice and sunny outside, so I'm feeling particularly... Yeah, right? I can see good. loads of loads of sun out the windows that I'm not making the most of currently. Yeah. So, yeah. uh... Also spent two days not realising why I felt like I was dying, and then it turned out it's when hay fever starts, so <laughs> I have medicated myself and I'm feeling lots more human. Good. You sound good, which is the main thing, and I don't really care about anything else other than that, so it's... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Is it my sexy voice? Yeah. You don't sound like you're dying too badly. So. Perfect. Non-death. Non-death is good. So um, welcome to the show. Um, before we get into it, but I'll just say what the topic will be. So today we are going to do a janky order list, as we talked about uh, when we did the Daughter of the Kane show. How and janky? As janky as Byron wants to make it, so... It's... No, that's not true. That's not true, though, is it, Russ? <laughs> All right, I've because curbed. Had... I've curbed your enthusiasm slightly, and made you made you stick within the Daughters of Cain allegiance. Um... <laughs> right, we've got some sharks in. <laughs> <laughs> so you threw some fish in. It's fine. Yeah. Um, and then um, Tom's here because we thought we what we did is quite often when we chat and we're doing hobby or whatever, we're we're talking through army list ideas and bouncing ideas off each other to get to an army list. And in quite a lot of our shows, we will showcase an army list that we've already gone through that process. So what we thought we'd do today is have Tom on the show who can throw some curveballs at us and we yeah. can show you live. And this might be a disaster, but we'll see <laughs> um, <laughs> how how we go about crafting a list. And we do have a video on tips for building army lists, which you can find on our channel. I'll put a link below. Um, but actually, we thought we would take a couple different topics and we would do some list crafting. And if you like this idea and you want some stuff crafted, then put that in the comments and, yeah. you know, give us a like and get similar videos. Like yeah, this give us a challenge. Stuff. We'll uh, we'll take it. If you don't think that Tom's made our lives hard enough, I'm sure that you can step in and take, <laughs> take, take on the challenge. <laughs> and, and the idea is we're trying to look to making them as, as match play competitive slash fun to take to an event as possible. It doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be like winning everything or anything like that, but <clears> just, just sort of adding a little bit of cohesion or, or like synergy into the armies and stuff like that, but they might be theme round models or whatever. So we thought we would just uh, have a bit of fun. Absolutely. I think um, it's that people just don't often do that extra bit of consideration. When I think about this, you know, like people turn up and they're like, I have this cool idea. Here's this idea from the book. Here's this idea from my head. Here's this idea from these are my favorite models. Uh, and then it just stops there. But I, um, I mean, I, I did that before I took my, my army that stomped it for like two years straight. Mm. And I just cobbled together my favorite things. But I thought really hard about trying my best to make my bag of crap work. And it actually did. So um, you, you become the GT champion, Byron. So yeah, it it must have worked really well. So uh, very confusing. Um, um, <laughs> but yeah, we want to take that type of, you know, that type of process because I started off just with a bag of crap and then I thought about it harder. And then by the end of it, it was the same bag of crap, but it wasn't behaving like crap. So ideally we want to go through like one of my thought processes for a list. And, <laughs> and by crap, we mean like seldom seen or unusual choices or suboptimal yeah, or, to the internet you, choices and stuff yeah. like that. So. Or less duplication of war scrolls because, um, I think a lot of lists, you know, people, well, here's my battle line. I'll duplicate it three times, you know, and take lots of it or something like that. Or that's a good monster. I, I want, you know, like three of them and then I can't put anything else in the army. It's very easy to duplicate things, but um, especially if your stuff doesn't cost much or you're making a multiple small unit army, MSU, then it's quite easy to get one hell of a lot in there. And those things aren't going to be significantly pointed by definition, kind of. Yeah, and I think sometimes there's something to be said for your opponent just not really knowing what your stuff does or how to deal with it. And sometimes also, that includes you not knowing, doesn't it? Yeah, and that can happen <laughs> yourself as well. But um we we thought we'd start but before we get into the main list crafting, um, 
first for a couple couple things. So first is that Face Hammer GT dates September the eleventh and twelfth um, this year, uh, subject to whatever happens in the world um, at Element Games uh, venue. Um, so that's up in around Stockport area in the UK. So mm-hmm. if your tickets are not on sale yet, they will go on sale at some point in the future and there will be a page on the website um, once that's been revamped because there's some work that me and Chewie have been talking about doing to the site to uh, make it super sexy and just to know obviously the world situation might make this less doable but if traveling from abroad is a thing we're only 15 minutes from Manchester airport Um, if anyone from abroad wants to attend please do you know get in contact early and we will do our best to accommodate you and make the process easier because we like it when people travel for our stuff. It'd be wonderful to see. Yeah, and uh, hopefully we can get back to gaming, have some fun, sink some some beers or, or some uh, juice if, that's so if you're jealous. one of those uh, non-drinkers, but you still use fluid, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> and and just have a bit of a fun. So I, I'm definitely... I got another meme today on my phone. It said this day three years ago, and it was another picture from a tournament. And I was like, "Can you just stop doing this to me, Google?" <laughs> like it's 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 just it's just torturous. It's like they know meme caption when you knew what fun uh, is. Like. Yeah, it's like it's like oh yeah, I remember those things I used to do like every every other week for every year <laughs> for the last ten years. Thanks very much. Um, so. <laughs> Such a such a first world problem. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so um, that's the first bit. So um, obviously, hopefully, check out uh, the website and that. We'll obviously you'll hear more about that as we get closer to the date. Uh, the next one is on our Sunesh video. We had a competition, um, and that was our Sunesh deep dive where we wanted some interesting army lists, and um, and that was to win a Series D brush set, um, and we've picked a winner. Um, and that is uh, Cameron Thompson with uh, Seeking Valhalla. So well done. Pretty cool list as well. I like yeah. uh, I like the extra thought that you put into it. And also, I I don't think that army is bad at all. No, that's got some it's got some legs for sure. It's it's got some wheels for sure. And le- <laughs> legs as well, actually, I should say, because obviously, like they've they've got multiple legs and lots of lots of uh, lots of slick blade seekers and bliss barb seekers and seekers. Um, so, you know, using the Exalted Speed Knight Battalion, only one hero, bit renegade, but it looks like it's uh, been themed loosely around Mad Max, which is cool. Um, shiny and chrome, so I expect to see this painted up all in, like, metallic flip paint or something equally crazy. Um, and you can use your Series D to get those dry brushes up on there to get all those models painted. So, um, yeah, so what we do, if you want to... Uh, I'll send you a reply to that comment, and if you just want to give me your email address or or email to contact at facehammer.co.uk, and then we can uh, get in touch to send you out a set. So well done, and uh, we'll be in touch. So uh, keep an eye on your uh, on on the comment, but send an email to us for, at that email address. But I'll put it on the comments so you can see it, and then uh, we'll sort out that brush set for you. So thanks very much for entering and and giving us an interesting list which uh, is very speedy, uh, so that was right up our street. certainly is. Yeah, absolutely. That's It's actually pretty close to some lists that I was sending Russ yesterday, <laughs> so perfect. Yeah, great. I can't believe you can pick my list. Well, I thought it was a bit <laughs> harsh to pick your list when you're on the show. I'd be like, hey, have a hey friend who collaborates. Let's, we'll give it to ourselves, <laughs> sort of indirectly. Um, no, but I did like your list, but... So. Yeah, all the chariots, just all chariots, chariots and more chariots. Yeah, yeah, it's not a bad idea. Shout out to Ricky for writing a list that was nothing from the Slanesh book, but it does look very cool and yeah. it's very low model count. So and drop. So I was into it. Although it is still it's still Slanesh Allegiance, but we were like, there's no actual, there isn't a single war scroll from the Slanesh book. <laughs> yeah, it benefits from it benefits so, from the rules, but not the war scrolls. So we, still, were, uh, we thought it was really cool, cool though. Yeah, absolutely. On the subject of fast, silly, multiple small units, then, shall we? Like, yeah, well, why not? Segue let's... our way into the silly daughters list that I've been writing. Yeah, let's let's go. I've got to have to, like, I'm going to have to populate this as we go on the fly, because cool. uh, I, I haven't actually... Um, I've got what I think prepped. it is. 
okay. so we can we can go through that and i can should i just i'll go top to bottom down it explain well, my thoughts i'll add then... the first stuff in originally that i know that's in it so marafi <laughs> yeah <laughs> um uh i don't know oh, it's annoying you have to add them both separately right and then you had yeah, you Morgweth, the blooded right yeah because Which bargain yeah. and if you're doing that you have to add the blade coven and the yeah follow um, along at home people no. absolutely <laughs> A slaughter queen rounds out the heroes. Okay. Um, what have we got unit wise for your battle uh, line? Ten witch elves, ten witch elves, ten sisters. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll do allies at the end. <laughs> um, the blade coven, if you've not already added those, I have that. Cool. Ten doomfire warlocks. It's like the renegade. Sweet. Five canary heart renders times two. Uh, heart renders. Cool. Yeah. Nine canine shadow stalkers. Ooh. I still find it weird when you see nines and elevens on this. It's, yeah, I like it. I don't agree. It's a weird. It's weird. And then, as far as allies go, we allowed up to oh. four, I think, by the end of it, but we just got three. Um, so, uh, deep kim first. We've got two Akalian Alapexes. Right. I, mean, I have to be a bit nimble on my uh, on my scrolling. Cool. And, and That's not in this book, Byron. Uh, we're going to properly upset Russ next. <laughs> I, 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 I know what's coming, and I'm, I, I'm hovering <laughs> over it now. I... Gyrocopters times three. Please. Do they come and... Do, they're not dispossessed, are they? Cities. Are they Juridin? They're cities. Oh, are they cities, technically. All right, okay. Uh, technically, uh, is that only type of crack that matters? Yeah. Are they not a war machine? No. They're a little fish with wings that flies around and shoots steam at people. That doesn't mean they look like puffer fish. Gyrocopters, you say, not gyro bombers. Yeah. Uh, correct, yeah, three of them. 180 points. Uh, so I get a yeah, I get a really just like I get huge satisfaction from the fact that my allies pull adds up to exactly four hundred points. <clears throat> so allies are there. <coughs> we've got our free battle line. Um we've got our heroes. No formations. Looking groovy. So, who's your general? Don't know. Who should be my general? Got to be, because you can't yeah. give the others all you need, can't they? So, got to be the slot queen. Now, temple. Or shall I? I'll take you through the thinking for the list, and okay. then you yep. can you can do the polishing here because this is the bit that I. Don't I might not know. be able to polish it, but I might better roll it in glitter. Okay. <laughs> right. well, you, can, you can you can polish anything if you freeze it, mate. So. Ugh. Just think about that, guys. So um, the idea of this list is the what you get when you have an incredibly strong battle tome, which Daughters is, where everything in it is not bad, is the ability to include anything in whatever sizes you like, and you're not sacrificing as much as you would be with a average tier army. And I'd say that Daughters are definitely a very high tier army, whichever one that is. Um, so the idea is this is a super swift moving army, it's very easy to just start off by putting in 30 witch elves. I've specifically not done that, but you know, you could drop out any number of things from that to have one large sized uh, battle line unit in there if you wanted. It'd be an absolutely fine option. We know how good they are. We know that they're very, they're very point sufficient. And this army is super, super, super swift. So perhaps for the temples, there's a way to capitalize on that even further. The teleport you around the board shenanigans one or something along those lines. The idea is that this list is going to be all over your opponent, all over the table, very difficult to deploy against because the amount of things off the board and the speed of things on the board, and then you're going to irritate your opponent by stopping their pile ins, which is what the um, the sharks aren't bad um, in themselves, but stopping oh, your opponent fan. from yeah, stopping your opponent from piling in with their shooting attack um, is really really good. And in an army like this, your opponent just won't know what to target. Um, really helpfully, I mean, obviously you start most daughters list with Marathi, but really helpfully, you need you need like a uh, an anvil in most lists like this, ideally, or just so many things that your opponent doesn't know where to shoot because it's daughters and there's no compromises ever. You could just have both. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is the joy of it. And Marathi is a hammer, an anvil, a hero, a caster, super fast, super resilient. She is absolutely everything, which is why in an MSU army, I've spent six hundred points on you know, one slash two units, depending on exactly how you want to define her. Um, so yeah, that's that's the idea behind it. The Warlocks are really 
they're properly overlooked. And that's yeah. a wizard with about a million wounds. It's got uh, well, well, it's got five so or got more models. Two wounds each, haven't they? So that's there's yeah. twenty wounds in the unit. I've got the war scroll up, so yeah, see it at home. They're better um, than you'd think. Shoot attack, pretty which much. people forget about. I forget they've even got got a crossbow. Yep, rend one melee attacks. Quite a lot of them, and some mm -hmm. horsey attacks. They, that unit will go through you know any opponent's ten whatevers that are just there to help them. Plus one to them. unbind as well when there's more than five. Yep, plus one to cast when there's more than five. Yeah, yep. And the uh, mm. the spell is d6 damage when there's five or more models in the unit. If there's so, 10 in it, it's just six water wounds flat. <laughs> right. I, just, I just cast it and kill your hero. Like, yeah, auto. not many things like that in the game. No. And um, yeah, the idea is that you know, if people get scared by that, they're going to put a load of shooting into that that isn't going into your other units. And then you're going to get all these canary and stuff swooping down, things jumping all over the board and you're probably not going to muller anything in combat with a big scary block, um, but you will get to dance around them and be a proper shadowy elf. Yeah, I, I think um, Doom Fires are really good because you've, you've got a combat unit, you've got a shooting unit, you've got speed, you've got a wizard. It's just like, and they're what, 120 points? Yeah, they're so good. They're, they're just completely. If it was a Sinesh, it'd be 260 points. <laughs> 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 not bitter. <laughs> Hashtag. It's, oh god. You Justice for Sinesh. <laughs> oh, you gave me some warlocks in that work. I do. I do a number with them. Please seek a wizards. I'm so uh, glad that Hell Striders are more expensive than them. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. I just. I, it's, it's, I was watching a thing about happiness. It says don't compare like things to others, and I think like that's the same with like daughters, isn't it? Because if you compare any army to daughters, you're gonna feel bad about your army. Yeah, you are. <laughs> you really, really are. <laughs> but it it does let you do some interesting stuff, and you know, I think you could turn up to an event with this even before we've polished it and Russ has uh, Russ has tweaked it. I think you could turn up to an event with this and do pretty well, and people wouldn't know what to do against that. Like, since when have you seen a a cavalry bus wizard in what? Age of Sigmar. Well, I don't even know what gyrocopters do. Do you know, Tom? Not a clue. No, I've, I've got the war scroll up. And yeah, I've got it up now. Fast. But So they move pretty fast. and they... 16 inches? That's, that's yep. fast, right? They are yeah. really important in the list because they are absolutely incredible at dealing with hordes. Jack is so... a steam gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got an eight inch range, but its attack catch is equal to the number of models within eight. Uh, um, okay. And it's freeze fours, rend one, damage one. Yep. But, so what you've got to think yeah. is if you're outside of three, that's effectively five. So, you know, don't get too greedy. Obviously, if you're in combat with something, then you can have that full eight inches. Um, but yeah, they are they are pretty efficient. Like If you look at what they do to a 30 block of infantry, they basically beat it pretty reliably. And they're going to catch some attention. Having three of them means you've got slightly more wounds, and you know, your, your opponent just isn't going to know what to shoot. Unless you face someone with like two star drakes or something like that, there's not, you know, there's not many ways that you're going to damage every single, you know, there's not much AoE or unless I'm running with <laughs> exploding bloodthirsters. I can't think of ways to delete <laughs> enough of this army fast very reliably. No, it's, um, I mean, it's the speed of that as well, isn't it? Because a 16 inch move is pretty far. Um, yeah. And there's lots of targets. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what are you going to do? You can't like, shoot my rifle oh. three times. That's all you're allowed. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then you're just going to have to spread it. Shoot as much as you want. Once... You just can't hurt. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'd encourage it if it's you who's running the list. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it'd work really well. How do you make it better then? Because you've got the temples of daughters down a little bit more than I no, have. Sorry. There are no and... snakes in it, Byron. I'm very sad about the lack of snakes. Well, due to the nature of the list, you could just drop anything and put some snakes in. I actually had that discussion with Russ when I was writing it. Like, it's that's the flexible thing with lists like this. You could just drop one unit and swap it for another one, or drop two units, and, sorry, drop three units and swap it for two units of snakes. Or something like that and probably the army isn't going to lose too much of its personality for having done so could even use the shooty snakes it wouldn't be a bad option because there's quite a lot of shooting in the list yeah it's uh i would i would probably it's a bit strange because i yeah anyway let's look at the <laughs> so would you i have a question <coughs> for you russ mm. while you're looking at these would you be 
trying to exaggerate what it already does with a temple, or would you be trying to counter what it's missing? Um, um, it depends what you've got available, because like you might say, oh, it'd be really nice if I had a way to like do something really funky, but you just might not have it in your army. Yeah. Um, I in my off the top of my head, immediately I'm thinking about uh, uh, Calibron. Yeah. Um, because you get minus one to hit from missile weapons, so if you're gonna anvil and fly around, you're not really worried too much about melee, um, because they ain't gonna be near you unless it's on your terms. And obviously you've got ways to mitigate melee with the net launchers. So for me, like minus one to hit from the concealment and stealth ability from Calibron, and then you've got the command ability master of shadow paths, which allows you to move a Calibron unit, hold within twelve of a hero, remove it and set up anywhere on the battlefield more than nine from enemy units. It's quite useful if you wanted to maneuver some of your stuff around. I mean When's it done? What phase? End of movement. So I believe it's been FAQ'd because there was a rule question with it with um uh let me just double check that because it's the there was a problem with the wording because it says it can't move in the following movement phase and I think people say that means you can't move between turns or something silly. Um so I think that's been fixed, but um just get to the FAQ document. Um Unless it's not revealed yet. I don't know. Oh, I don't think the FAQ's out, actually. Oh, yeah, Daughters of Cain, 2019. That's the old one. Oh, okay, so there's no FAQ out yet. I'm sure there'll be an FAQ on that. But, um, yeah, so... But to be honest, like, I don't know how useful that is in your army because, like, the Doomfires do their stuff in the... They can shoot. Yeah, what range is their shooting? 12. So you could oh. be 9 away and shoot something. So it's not terrible, yeah. but the spell you you kind of want to be is obviously in the hero phase, so yeah, that's not going to be come into effect. The range of the steam guns is not long enough for, to use that. The shadow stalkers yeah. couldn't do it anyway. Even Marathi is not a bad option. Or, I... Well, that's the only thing you'd probably do it on is is Marathi really. Um... The other thing is your canary. Uh, obviously, they move fairly fast, but. They, they're super flexible while they're in the air because you haven't popped them down yet. It's yeah. quite nice. If you've ever played with the Vex, the banner, you know how, you know, or while you're playing with Stormcast without a Vex, the banner, you know how much slower and less flexible you feel once stuff has landed on the table. Um, and you don't have to be, you know, teleporting 30 scary people somewhere. You could just be being like, okay, well, I'm going with that objective um, or something like that. The There is a nice interaction with a Canary insofar as. You could move them, uh, shoot with them, and then on a four plus they'd get to move again. Yeah, which would be cool. So they could be moving. You know, they could be zipping around the board, and then you're slightly less restricted by the teleport. Yeah, I mean, it, what it's... range is they're shooting? Uh, I think well, it's twelve as well. Yeah, so Lots you can kind of get in more range to shoot with and then zip out again before they get or move them shoot with them have a four up of being able to get closer to something and then charging it or just use it as a way to you know their the movement is obscene then because yeah. you're getting around the restriction of having to be more than nine away from people so that's the annoying isn't it <clears throat> and the two artifacts are pretty good minus one to hit with melee weapons that target the general and um cool. pick the melee weapon of the general but a modified hit roll is a six. It does a mortal wounded addition. So that makes the Sword Queen a little bit more survivable and a little bit more nice. pokey. There's going to be minus two to look out to her to be shot at, minus one to be hit in melee. Um, helpful when you're a little bit squishy. Mm. I think the, yeah, because you get minus one from the, just the Allegiant, but I don't, I think it's just melee only, the command trait. With melee weapons, yeah. So check one from hit rolls for attacks made by melee weapons. So just minus one. Oh, minus one, two for shooting because of lookouts, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, hmm? Doesn't hurt. Yeah, I thought, thought it was there. I'd quite enjoy playing with that. Um, and like I said, if it turned out it was going too far in the lots of little things theme, you could just ramp up one of those units um, of battle line, whether it's the Witch Elves or the Sisters to a 30. And you'd have a, with one concession, you'd be straight to a super strong list. And then you'd have something really scary to teleport around. 
as well. Mm. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I think it depends on the meta. I think if you, anti shooting is pretty good. I mean, like the Crafe, um, if you had Sisters of Slaughter as your battle line, obviously a bit more expensive, then you could um, you <coughs> could use that one because that allows your Sisters of Slaughter to um, get plus one to wound, and also um, they can fight again on the five up. But you need to have Sister Slaughter unit, so I don't think that really fits what you're doing. Um, Hagnar is still not a bad option. Never um, a bad option, is it? No, I think a lot of the stuff in here, like, so you still get the command trait with of um, the Fanatical Faith is a 5-up um, instead of a 6 for normal wounds, not for mortal wounds. Um, and then you've got... Um, you can add one to the battle round for your bonuses, so it helps there. Um, and then you get plus one damage on one of the Sword Queen's weapons if she charges, so it's not bad. No, I guess the, the add one to the battle round for bonuses is actually really good when you've got that many units that you want to be doing stuff all over the place. Mm. Just re-rolling ones on charges and, and getting the most out of your small units in melee is going to be a, quite a big deal with it as well. Yeah, and then you could even have, um, like, Drake Ganef is improved rend of melee weapons used by Witch Elves and Sisters of Slaughter if they make a charge. So that might be useful if you were wanting yeah. to use them more as aggressive darts. Yeah. Um, and then Keltnar retreat and charge would be very useful. Um, and then you've got the Bleed the Mind command ability. Um, <laughs> If the modified hit roll of a melee weapon, the target's a count unit is a one, the attacking unit suffers a mortal wound, so you have a command ability, so it's pretty good. And obviously you get a free unit of harpies. And then you it's get a artifact which um if the unmodified hit roll for an attack is a six, it gets two hits instead of one. So count nar would be would be viable quite, as well, I think. That's quite renegade, isn't it? I guess this is uh the strength of daughters, we just listed off like three or four, which sound like they could. I think I think for me, like Kalnar allows Marafi to get where she needs to be, like being able to mm -hmm. retreat and charge. So you can just basically go where well, you can't pin her. So even though you use her as an anvil, if your anvil gets pinned by something that you want her somewhere else on the table, and also it allows stuff like your Canari or your. Um, Shadow Stalkers or your Doomfire Warlocks to like fade away and go to something else. Yeah, that's a pretty <clears> cool <throat> idea actually. It's not like you're going to struggle to like the average move in the army is twelve probably, mm. even including the infantry it's I've seen. So um, you're not going to struggle to get where you want to. So I think like they're all they're they're pretty much for me. If I was ranking them, I'd probably put Keltnar as one, Calibron as two, mm -hmm. Hagnar. Drake Ganef and the Cray for all sort of okay, but I, I think they're <coughs> at those three really. Uh, Zane for Kai, you just won't take because it's um, it's a snake one. It's all about Malusai, so very hard. Yeah, that was me doing a snake slither. That was a snake wiggle. <laughs> that was that's my contribution. <laughs> so so what is a good. Like, what is the worst matchup for for a list like that? Because I, because it, like, for me, it's still. I I hear what you're saying, and I'm thinking, I still don't fully, like, it's still Warhammer that doesn't make sense in my head a little bit. If that makes sense, how you how like, you win with an army like that? Yeah, to some extent, yeah. that's and then, explains every army I've ever taken. <laughs> <laughs> but then I suppose so. Understanding what is the big like holes in it that you know, that other armies can exploit, potentially. Like, I feel like if you're... If you came up against a, a super resilient block army, I don't think you'd be able to do too much to the block, but then again, it, I don't think it's really got any huge weaknesses, because if you came up against shooting, um, there's a lot of targets, and particularly if you've yeah. taken minus to be shot at, then that doesn't hurt. So that answers the obvious one. Like if you, I don't know, if you turned up and someone had a lot of units of judicators, they could actually over a couple of turns, dec decimate your units pretty effectively. Minus yeah. to be shot at counters that. And the things it would struggle with, 
scenario dependent, of course, which is one of the things that makes a big difference in AOS. But let's say you come up against fire slayers, you're you might get slightly caught out by them having less drops than you because everyone is going to have less drops than you. So they might be yeah. able to, you know, use a six on a run, get up there mid table, and establish in the right scenarios in a way that you couldn't come back from. But generally speaking, you just try and get in the way and annoy them. And the way that armies like that win isn't necessarily by killing people. It's about being in the right place at the right time. And the yeah. flexibility of that army to be where it needs to be on the table is, you know, there's not many things that could keep up with it in that respect. So it would all be about pinning things, um, making sure that you got the minimum of your opponent's units models attacking you back because you are going to die quite fast and um, probably losing half or two thirds of your army every game, but having a very good chance of winning on scenario, apart from Iraq. <laughs> yeah. Like Cause, uh, yeah, because it thinks like, to me, I look at that and I think, like, how if you if you're up against something like you said, like a big block, or even something like Stonehorns or um, yeah, or Gargants, where it's like they can if they're lower drop and they they can they're fast enough that they go and sit on objectives kind of from turn one, and they just go, okay, well we'll sit here and you can ping me with your little units and stuff, but they don't die quick yeah. enough to. If if people don't have other things that can keep up with the things that are on the objectives, ganking something, just, you know, surrounding it, you will be able to do quite a lot. <coughs> two, Sinet, two Canary coming from the sky, shooting uh, with their two Rend in the turn they come down, then going in and attacking, um, which helps is still so good as a <laughs> sisters, you know, just getting some of them in there and Marathi. If the opponent's block or monster has to receive all of that, you get, you get two things going on. There's just a huge volume of attacks first of all, and unless they've got a quite low on mortal wounds, I guess, um, mm -hmm. unless they've got a two-up re-rollable armor save or something, you are going to get a fair bit of damage through, you would imagine. But if not, um, if it's about having things close to the objectives, if you put five units around there, one, um, they've got to split attacks, and they are not going to they're not going to kill all of those okay. units. They won't even kill half of them. So it could just be that you have four units, go and attack that, they split attacks, maybe wipe out one, you replace it with another. And all that time they're doing that, if it's a monster, you've got more models than them close to that objective. And if it's a unit, their unit will atrophy. Um, few exceptions I can think. It probably wouldn't like playing Stormcast, that type of army. You know, lots of reliable shooting, um, rerollable, high-quality armor saves. Um, I don't think it'd enjoy seeing Fulminators. Um, what other weaknesses would you say it's got, Russ? Um... I don't think it's got many because, like, no. I mean, the the biggest problem I think with it is its sustain on objectives. Like, yeah, um, if it's a hero objective, you're fighting because you've got Marathi. But if it's like a traditional number of models around this thing, you don't have that sustain. So that like, you've got a lot of units that are very fragile. Speed bumps, not um, yeah. Staying power. And although you can anvil with <coughs> Marathi, if someone like you say, like Fire Slayer blobs or. Yeah, even like Nighthorn, like three units of 40 chain rasps, you know, just lobbed onto objectives. You, you're going to struggle to kill them <clears throat> quick enough before they score enough scenario points that you're obviously you've mitigated that weakness with the gyrocopters because that that gives you an anti horde. So you've got you've got an anti horde there. You've got the redeployment from the heart renders. I think Keltnar's, I'd go Keltnar if I was playing this 100%. It's one of the three. But an additional unit of I just I just think it about it. I just think you you do. I think you it's it's it better fits than as well the theme. One. Yeah, it's uh, it's very good and like the Alapexes allow Marathi to sustain longer because what you can do is like retreat out, net them, charging on a corner, then they're not probably won't do three wounds to her. Whereas, really good point. That one turn they do two wounds is worth an entire. It's is worth other... another turn. So yeah. it's I think for me, like you're gonna have to use the the speed to concentrate your attack power from like the warlock's heart, you know, the spell, the shooting, the all, all the redeployment you've got is is important. You just don't have many bodies, so those darts of witch elves and sisters, they're really important. I think the doomfire warlocks are gonna be like a key unit in the army. Yes, yeah. and the gyrocopters in some scenarios would be key as well. So if like if I was playing against it, and I had particularly large units like Mortec Guard, I would be catapulting off those gyrocopters as my number one point, because that allows my infantry to sustain longer. Um, 
I think I don't think there's that. I mean, I think the problem with this is that if you get double turned, it's gonna yeah. hurt. Yeah, it's <laughs> like really hurt, especially if <clears throat> they. And that's the only issue with being high drop is that generally your opponent is probably going to let you go first. Now, one of the things you have going for you if that happens is it allows you to get up on scenario, but it also gives you units that you can impact the game turn one because of the speed and the shooting. Um, and Marafi's not slow, right? So she can um, potentially interact turn one with people uh, or at least just blob onto stuff. She could just stand on an objective, I guess. Really um, awkward as well, just blob her forwards, even if she doesn't, you know, get in. You could mm -hmm. put just some canary in front of her in as wide a line as possible, and then people have got to kill and, them, maximize attacks on Marathi, and that could be enough to, you know, buy you a turn in the And half. being like Kelt Noir, you just don't care that she gets pinned, because basically yeah. you're like, I could put a 14 on the 12 inch line, move her 14 inches, probably going to be a 10 inch, 11 inch charge or something into a screen if they've deployed on the on the line and then you're like well it doesn't matter if if i don't make the charge because they charge me i've got retreat and charge um yeah you can still drop your canary from the sky if there's an opening you could use the just put the free unit down in front of their army just to be a speed bump so i don't know like i think um <coughs> and the net launches as well from the alapexes i think i think you the allies are proper techie they they yeah. fill two holes really well because it stops people from piling in around you with two units you're more likely to be able to stop it guaranteed and then if someone does have a hold you can at least threaten it with a gyros i think it's as well it'll be hard just to like kill the units i probably think i think on the out uh, witch elves i'd probably give them bucklers yeah just I can see that just because um, i i think i'd rather them be a little bit more Depends. Well, it depends what you want them for, but I think the the good thing about bucklers is they they do more wins back on the save, don't they? Um, You've then got that on the canary, and you could have it on. You could just take bucklers on everyone, and yeah. then all of your you'd have three units of canary bouncing wounds back, and three units of ten battle line bouncing wounds back. Yeah, and I was thinking about the prayers. So, like, um, you obviously get the slaughter queen gets a prayer, and you also get a prayer on the. Um, on Morgweth, the hag. Obviously, she doesn't count as Count Narb. I don't really think you care about that. Um, doesn't really make any difference. She's got the hag yeah, nar keyword. Um, but I'm just trying to find the actual prayers. So, um, Catechism is if you are six, you get two hits. So, that, I think that's pretty pretty good. Bless and reroll fanatical face, probably not useful. Martyr sacrifice. Um, each other model from the unit is slain. Pick an enemy unit three out of five. They take a mortal. That's pretty good because you can turn your little darts into do Suicide more damage. Bombs. Yeah, and then yeah. So I think that's probably probably take martyr sacrifice and cataclysm. Um, you don't really care about blessing the king because you're not Hagnar, yeah. and you're not playing with big units, so it's not really that useful. I mean, you might do it. Depends. Um. And then, like spell spell law wise, um, I think that's quite good on Rafi actually. The um, rerolling saves on her maybe might be useful. Yeah, just that that one or two turns if you can not take those three wounds. I've had it before; it's devastating playing against her. Mm -hmm. Just um, needs to roll one six when you're shooting at her with good shooting. I'm like, oh god. And the withering would be good because. Um, it's add one to win rolls for attacks that target to an next hero phase, so that affects shooting as well as combat. That's so weathering cool. would be a good spell. Um, you probably want that over mind raiser. Um, I think so, unless you're the mind raiser warlock. <laughs> <laughs> well, you say that, but maybe Quite a lot of attacks. You know, they get um, extra rend and extra damage if it charged. Wow. So it's not a bad option. It's not. Actually. It's not awful. <laughs> Works well with the retreat and charge from yeah yeah, yeah good point Tom. So rent two warlocks. <laughs> it's a thing. I don't know if you get to do you get to have a spell on big and little or just little right? Yeah, just little. Yeah, maybe you would take mine razor. You don't have a second wizard, do you? So no, cataclysm and then probably 
Yeah, probably might have sacrificed, maybe. Don't know. Whatever. I mean, it's not that sort of stuff's not really that important. Like, you don't really have any choice on artifact or trait because you just have to take the defaults yeah. and you don't have a formation. So, um, I think the only choice really with this, because obviously we we sort of you come up with this already off off offline. Um, it's probably just the temple, and I I for me I'm leaning to Celt Nar more than anything. It just it yeah. just improves your mobility. Um, obviously you can't retreat and shoot, but doesn't always necessarily be a problem to be honest. No, I think you'd be about turn three you'd be scrabbling to stay annoying. I think the major weakness of it is you pointed out correctly getting double. It's going to be pretty painful, and even if it doesn't have a specific weakness, I don't think it's a particularly forgiving army to play with, because if you screw up, you'll you'll lose three units in a turn and feel like your game's over. Well, skill skill floor I think is fairly high, like you say. That that's the, <coughs> that's the I'm problem out. with the. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but you say that, but then like playing with a list like this will teach you a lot about the game, and your opponent will be confused. Unless it's, you do something catastrophically bad. That's something I was looking at the list and thinking. It's like, even with, like, daughters being so powerful and there's a lot in there which isn't what you would normally expect to see in, yeah. like, a high-power uh, daughter system. Like, you look at that and go, oh, it's Marathi. Okay, I kind of know what to do with that. And then you go, okay, wait, what? There's gyropters and yeah. shark. And... There's, like, no cauldron. <laughs> there's no witch elf blob. There's no... Yeah. You can shoot the hag, but then actually, does it matter that you kill the hag? Yeah. Not really, because yeah, you don't really mine. care about witch brew, because no one cares about witch brew in the army. Um, <laughs> so I think, I think for me, like this is one of the things that is a strength is that it will wrong foot people, um, because sometimes when people go to a game, I've done it before with having a big blobby unit that people think is the main threat, and they they go after it because it's it looks like the obvious threat but it's actually not um so this this is very hard if you saw this on the table like you go what exactly do i prioritize killing I mean, if i prioritize marathi they're capped anyway that's exactly. the, well, she's that's so the, important that's isn't it? the point like you can't alpha her so you could say like marathi is the, the the linchpin of the list but you can't focus fire because she's got a cap so it becomes what you, I mean, for me, if I'm playing against this, I'm literally just trying to reduce the number of bodies in the army. So actually the priority would be the, the units of battle line. Yeah, um, I think so. Cause they've got the most, most models in the not particularly resilient. And probably the, if I've got hordes, the gyrocopters and the doom fires, I'm not really bothered about anything else in the list. Yeah. Um, obviously Marathi, but you can't do much about that. You cannot. Which is why she's so good so but yeah so that's cool I, I think it'd be quite a competitive army um yeah i do too actually surprisingly so either going to be not taken seriously or people will be confused and overwhelmed which either of those is fine i think as well <laughs> like um one important point when talking about army lists is that as a gamer you you have a personality on the table yeah, like absolutely. so like byron sort of talks about his lists are very much like this this suits his strengths. So like for me, this is kind of pulling away from my strengths. So like I wouldn't necessarily get on with playing with this. I think as well, like being excited about using it is another important point. Um, I think I would find it kind of frustrating to use because I kind of like the um, setup and combo of something quite strong and there isn't anything in the list like that. There's no yeah. hammer. It's like, it's like chip away, chip away, chip away, be annoying, fade away, and it doesn't really suit my play style. So when you write a list, it's kind of important to understand that, but you don't have to stick to that because you don't necessarily know, because you've never used a list like this, maybe it will suit you. But it's also understanding, and I know that because I've played so many games, like what I gravitate to, and I have, I have tried lots of different things out. So I'd say that, the issue I have with like daughters lists where you know specifically we see it online and it's like there oh this is S tier and this is the list and you go right it's Hagnar whatever or or Keltnar now and you go it's 30 Witch Elves, 30 Witch Elves, Cauldron, Marathi, Hag, Morgreth, 
blah 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 and you go i've got 100 points left so all it becomes is what does that 100 points turn into how do you outfit your canary yeah it's like the the skaven the old dark elf army as well when like when literally you had the exact same army apart from the last 200 points and that was does is that a unit of witch elves or something else which was completely irrelevant to what the list did um so i think like it's important to look for the alternative strength in a book and i think like it's quite interesting that i think you would actually do better with this list than you would with a more traditional daughter's army i think so it might take me a little bit of practice but i completely agree if you're into something as well those hours put into you know nerding out on the book you will reap the benefits of like russ and i are doing it with some mess now <laughs> my level of understanding is 5x what it was a yeah. few weeks ago, and it's because i want to continue reading the book if you just copied something and you didn't make it like I've changed that list three or four times when we were making it. And I was chatting to Russ and he's like, well, how about this? That doesn't work. Go and read the scroll. You're, you're educating yourself at the same time as you're doing it. So if you care, you want to educate yourself and, and continue tweaking. And yeah. that's a big part of where you end up, you know, owning not, the shit out of a list. I'm still continuing that journey because after we did those extra Sigbold and Depravity shows, I got um, called up on the word other which i seem to have a massive blind spot for <laughs> um so thanks for people who pointed that out that basically like you can't use the keeper's Keep command yourself. ability on himself uh and things like that which you don't realize those nuances um and so it's important especially when you're looking at lurid haze like if your general is at the keeper then he can never activate the command ability on another model that's the general because there have been 12 and you can't use the command ability so it's that trade-off do you want the trait or do you just not bother um so yeah you know, i've written some different iterations of the army but um there's one version that i I'm, I'm quite leaning towards at the moment but it's those like little nuances that you find out but i would say that one of the most important things to remember is that it's the journey of discovery is more fun than someone telling you what to do and you just put it on a table and then trying to enjoy it yeah it goes in deeper as well right that's the big thing yeah because you've made it you know you know it better you know you you've 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 actually like marinated on the idea when you get to the table you remember why it's there or what it can do therefore you look you see the opportunities on the table and i think one of the things that what byron likes to do is have a massive toolbox so whatever is on the table, he can like use something to deal with it, which is exactly. why the gyrocopters went in, right? I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry so on the on the subject of um, marinating things until they become a fine vintage, Tom, what are we going to be? What are we going to be polishing for you today? Uh, I've got a couple of ideas for you. So first up, I think shall we talk? Shall we talk about not just one star trek? But two Star Treks. Yeah, we can absolutely talk about that. Well, affectionately known as the Double Dragon list. So the Double Dragon. What yeah. I'll do is let's take a little break, and then when we come okay. back, we can talk about Double Dragon Stormcast. Exciting. All right. I'm down. We're back in a sec. <laughs> And we are back from the break, and we're going to talk about Double Dragon Stormcast because it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Is that the entire concept you got, Tom, or have you got initial <laughs> ideas? Or like, that's fine if it is. So or... I, I, I do kind of have a, <laughs> an, an initial idea-ish, but it, I, I look, I've literally been looking at it today and going, that's basically just like most of the old TM list but with just an extra dragon in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And slightly less other stuff. So I'm I'm kind of curious as to whether there's, like, an alternate way to go, whether there's, like, you lean into a particular... Because, so, the, the the list I've got at the moment kind of leans more into the original Warrior Chamber, I guess, to some extent, with a bit of the... with a bit of the Drake... Drake... I can't remember what's the second chamber. Uh, Drake... Uh, mm, Dracophian, Drake Swan. Drake Dracophian. Dragon... Star. Dragony one. Dragon Elves and Lightning Bolt Dragons. Yeah. Daily Peeps. Uh, with some Fulminators and stuff. But Is it Extremist I... Chamber? Was that it? Yes, that was it. Extremist. But then I kind of wonder whether the you could actually lean into, like, uh, the 
the Vanguard chamber more, whether there be like something with lots of traveling paladors or something. I don't know. <laughs> Like, I guess it, what's like what two dragons what's your just objective? Be really cool. Is it like is your have you picked two dragons because that's less models and they're cool models? Um, what is your like have you picked it because it's going to be fast? Do you just like things with wings? What's your give so us more info? It starts with models because they yeah. are just cool models and they are. like one of my favorite, they're one of my favorite models. They're hard to they're hard to convert, but that's a completely different, a completely yeah. different kind of fish. The um. I think they're they're they they're fairly fast. They're semi. They can be kind of resilient. They yeah. rain of stars. I think two rain of stars is kind of like actually exactly. that's potentially a five wound hero just dead. Yeah, which I think is kind of potentially quite strong. I like, and I just like the idea that when one dies, there's still another one there. <laughs> are you, we um... are we talking like? Double Celestin, or we take Drake Swarms, Drake Swarm Tempers. Uh, either, because I think I think you can, like they're both they're both big, like yeah. chunky threat <laughs> things. <laughs> um, so obviously the obviously the Celestin's much more hitty and and you know does a bit more damage, but but in terms of the rest of their abilities, that all comes from the dragon. In terms of like the you know the Reign of Stars and the the They've still got the like stuff. pipping out a model right, to break. Yeah. So they? I, I wonder if Brut is gonna go where where I go on this. So one thing that I'd say is the moment you've got two of them, if you've got anything in your army that is like target a model with a command ability, if it's not something that's usable twice, um you can only use it once, or if you don't have command points, you can only use it once, or there <laughs> might be you know a spell or something like that. So if you're if you're thinking is to like have two mega resilient things, you might just not be able to do it, or it might require yeah. you to know put two additional buffing characters in or something like that. Yeah. So you could absolutely go Star Drake, Drake's one Templar, and then have this one as the more resilient one being the Star Drake, and yeah. just have the other one to benefit from the other stuff. Yeah. I, uh, I've got an idea. Is it putting the prime in? Oh, I'm Maybe, already but um, you, you've got <laughs> many points left, so. The idea that I'm thinking of is that you use these two guys as your like anvils. Yep. And then what you want around it is you want range damage and mortal wounds and ways to make these guys stick around. Um like so that like, skinks, yeah? Yeah, yeah. No. Don't use allies. <laughs> Go away. All right then, you you recon first. Um so one of the things like with the Drake Swarm Templar is has he actually got a free up save now? Is that just me being Ooh, has he got one more save his rules? <coughs> this is how, how often I look at the Drake it's, Swarm. I mean it's better than me asking you to make one with four Drake Swarm Templars. So there, is only one there isn't much more you can do with that list. Three units of liberate is done. Like <laughs> it's it. um I think um so what's the difference defense wise between the two then? So sixteen wounds, sixteen wounds, free up, free up. Both the same move. So the difference is the combat power that go on top, and I think yeah, the think mortal wound rebound. Figure right sh thunder shield. You can reroll saves of one, and if it's successful, you do a mortal wound. Obviously, it doesn't have that. Um, yeah. Always well, mystic shield the other one then, couldn't you? If it doesn't have that, mm -hmm. if you got a wizard. Yeah, it has a shooting attack. It's got a bow, not particularly very good, um, but you get to add one to hit rolls made by friendly Drifkofian guard units uh, that target the enemy until the end of the turn. Um, but he's not a Drakofian guard, so nah, so that's it's I only that for fulminators. So fulminators it doesn't do much. Um, Quite expensive as well, aren't they? Yeah, so you could oh. technically go if you were trying to save points. How many points Double is a Drake, Drake sworn? Well, Four. I think you're going to take one Lord Celestin. Um, I think you are. You save good. eighty points. Yeah, um, we'll see. might not be a thing. It That's might not just, even be know. worth it for that. But, um, I'm just trying to think. Like, first of all, like, would you take Signs of the Storm or would you take a Stormkeep from Broken Realms? Marathi is one of the. And I think you would want a formation because you want a second mount train and you want 
um, a second artifact. Is it worth it when you're going to lose dudes, when you're already going to be low on dudes? Mm, I think so. If you can get a I cheap mean, one in that... If you can get to three drops or less, definitely. Otherwise, I'd be questioning it. Well, I would, I would on... be thinking maybe put the rest of the army in a formation. Okay. So you have a three. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and one of the things I would be tempted... I mean, this might just be rubbish, but... Obviously, you need to have a formation with battle line in it, so you're getting a little bit thin on what you can actually do. Um, I, I think you got the Thunderhead Brotherhood, but that's just libs and judicators. Um, <coughs> Nothing wrong with libs and judicators. And you're not going to have much points for no, <laughs> no. Um, I actually think. I actually think the Stormkeep. I might have to go. I might have to go to the bookcase. Two secs. You go to the bookcase. I'll ask Tom questions. So, do you? Do you just want to? Like, I think the shooting thing could definitely be a thing. Do you, you, you want to make the most of two chunkers? Do you like the idea of backing them up with bows, or do you, you? You just don't care as long as the dragons are getting stuck in, or pretty much. Yeah, like I don't. I don't want them to be a. I would. I would prefer it that they were the. That they were the punch, okay. Rather than them, like, oh, we're going to see him on an objective and he's not going to die. So, <laughs> kind of thing. I, I I'd may rather have... it would... Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. But then I suppose, I suppose you've got where well, you've got two of them. You could do, you could have one that was see an objective and don't die, and you could have another one that was just going to run at you and hit you because they're also massive bases. You know, they're the biggest bases. Is it mad to not have a heraldo in there, Russ? For the ability of giving the Drake run and charge, it just adds to its threat so much, right? Yeah, I mean, there's loads of stuff that synergize. So, you, like, you've obviously got the Castellan for plus one save. Yeah. You've got the Heraldor with uh, run and charge, and I think retreat and charge. You've got um, the Relictor for healing. You've got prayers. You've got loads of stuff that can synergize. Um, but it is generally pretty good on its own. I think for me, yeah. like, if I was, if I'm leaning into like, them being anvils and i'm wanting to do damage and then i one of the formations i quite like is the stormkeep patrol from um from broken realms marathi which is a veritant griffhounds two redeemer or just a car units in any combination and cool. in stormkeep you get a ability which allows you to um add one to bravery of um, Stormcast units where they're holding 12 of Liberators, but also the end of the movement phase, pick a unit of Liberators didn't move and weren't set up, and you say they stand fast and they get plus one to hit and plus one to save. Wow. So <coughs> you can use them like a blob of Liberators in that formation, and because that formation's rule is ever vigilant after armies are set up, but before the first battle round, you can remove units, you set up the Lord Veriton, and then basically. Uh, more than nine away for the enemy and everything else holy within 12 of the veritant holy outside of nine but what it allows you to do is that if it's your go first you can move and charge but also you can set them up on objectives and one of the units in the patrol can be a shooting unit so if you do that in anvils of held and hammer you can set them up before the game in range then you you take the first turn you can use the command ability to shoot then you can shoot again in the shooting phase and the liberators can form like a wall and you can just go, they're going to get plus one save and plus one to hit, but I'm not actually going to move. But you could still make the nine inch charge. Yeah. And still get gonna... it. So, in that case, would you be encouraged to put in a 10 of Judicators and a 10 of Liberators as two well, of your battle line? Redeemer then? Un... Um, um, yes, but Justicar units are also Vanguard, Raptors, and um, Vanguard with Raptors with Hurricane Crossbows and Long Strikes. So I might be tempted Hurricane, to run... 12-inch range, Hurricane? 18. 18. Okay. So I might be tempted to run, but also you could also, if you don't move, you get extra shots, but yep. you could always set up and then move and then shoot and get less shots, but have a <coughs> have their move and the range. So you could yep. poke. Um, And with things like Reign of Stars, and if you took like the Comet... Um, I'm just seeing how many points it'll be because I, I think but the problem is you need to like you obviously need battle line. Is the formation? 
Uh, it's only I think it's only one hundred and twenty. Okay. Which I Maybe. don't think is too bad. Um, spending a thousand points on. Oh yeah, you are going to get tight for points pretty fast. Oh yeah, but you got you got a thousand points in two models, so you're going to struggle. Um, <laughs> so you're not going to get much else in the army. So it's I've just I'm literally just struggling on War Scroll Builder to find everything. So it's there's so the many things on it. Twenty-seven uh, Stormcast heroes later. Oh, it's just even like the b formation says like a bazillion. <laughs> um, so we got libs. Let's go with uh, hurricane crossbows. Let's just try that. Yeah, we're already at nineteen sixty, so that ain't gonna work. Yeah, you just There's nothing don't... wrong with judicators. They're battle line. They've got very long range shooting. They got rend one. They got a champion that explodes. Yeah, yeah. It's not That's the most exciting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I'm just trying to be, uh, I'm trying to do something else fun. I've got a fun list that I did on Vince's show. I was trying to like use a half and halfway house. Is it difficult when we spent one thousand and sixty yeah, points? Yeah, spent on... too many points on one big thing. Too big. Yeah, but you have probably have one so anyway. Right? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna bin that idea off. I don't think you get it. Let's bin that off. It's not worth it. Okay. So if we want to make the most out of them, we need a herald, all right. I think you do, to yeah. threaten and pin. Okay. So basically, that gives you the option to. So are they twelve? I think they're twelve inch move, aren't they? What the dragons? The star drakes, yeah. Um, yeah, I have the twelve inch. Yeah. Okay. So twelve inch move. Um, then you can give them run or charge. For, run and charge for the heraldo. Um, turn that run to a six if you don't get it, and you know you've got a not too bad chance of getting in. And because it's a Star Drake, you don't get to use many monsters. If it doesn't make the charge, there's a very good chance that it still survives. <coughs> and there's, you know, other monsters can't do that. And if you do make the charge, like I literally, I remember losing a, losing a game, turn one, game one of a tournament to someone making a, uh, whatever it was, like a, an eight inch charge or something when they'd done that. And it's just so devastating. They're so resilient. If they pin two units, you're fleeing your first turn. And if your opponent doesn't win the priority, they're on the back foot completely. And if they do, they're still probably trying to deal with, you know, the shit storm of dragon that you put in their face and then you back <laughs> it up with another one. On top of Reign of Stars and all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. Do we want double Star Drake then? Or are we all going to deal with the Drake Sworn Templar? I think we just downgrade if we run out of points, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah start off with double Star Drake. Um, as the ideal solution, then Heraldo. Do we accept that there's no magic in the list? This is another thing you got to consider when you're doing this, Tom. Like it's, yeah. they don't cast spells, and if we want, you know, we might. Oh, it's hard to give up Heraldo. I don't know which I'd pick. Well, we need to fill out the rest of the list when we got because we might better have both. So yeah. Um. So you got Heraldo, um, which is a hundred points. Line. Uh, yeah, that's the thing we need to... I mean, it's just probably just two Judicator and a Liberator, right? And yeah, I think so. Unless there's something else you particularly feel strongly about. No, I um, I really like I really like Triple Judicators as well. I think it, back, it backs up the list pretty tastily. They're a bit more expensive, though, aren't they? One yeah, they're, they're 140 they? instead of 90. So, um, so... Okay, so let's just put two... We can play around with it in a minute once we've fleshed it out. So we've got two two dragons. I, I'm i trying to think where... Sold. Hmm? Sold. <laughs> I'm just trying to think what host you'd take, what storm host. I I didn't get that far. <laughs> I got um, to two dragons, that was... I got being, able to, being able to shoot... The one that's like Cunning Ruck. Thing where you can shoot again and in hero phase. And how held and hammer. It's very flexible and well rounded. Mm. <coughs> you'd need a you'd need a unit to shoot with though. Um, I think you put a caster in because you need the extra armor save, right? It's just I've already put one in. Yeah, um, we'll see if he made for Aldo's going to have to go then. Let's carry on. Um, so you've got um, you still get hammers. A Castle, don't you? Yeah, a single Griffin. Yeah, that can run up. He's, he's not about 120 points. Either. He's not. He's well worth it. So, yeah. Um, you've got um, hammers, Sigma, so You get plus one bravery. <coughs> um, 
use a command ability whenever a redeemer unit is destroyed on a five plus you can set the unit up again on the battlefield again so quite nice if you're running uh for your battle line recycling um every time you allocate a wound or mortal wound to hammers a sigma unit hold within nine of the general on a six up it's ignored so it's a six up after save who's going to be your general the star um, drake and is, is he going to be i guess well, it's on himself if you did... good enough right yeah yeah um then you've got the god forge blade uh if uh if the a modified hit roll for attack is a six add one to the damage of the attack so that's pretty good for his weapons as well yeah so not terrible he gets d3 extra attacks on the charge or just d3 extra attacks depends always. on what weapon you give him yeah you'd probably if you did that you want to maximize the amount of attacks wouldn't you uh most likely um yeah. so he's got um i'm trying to look at the weapons so the hammer three attacks the blade three attacks so i think the hammers uh Extra. freeze twos rend one damage d3 and if it's three attacks freeze fours rend one damage two i think you go for the hammer every yeah. time so i think the hammer gives you d3 extra attacks on the charge i believe so yeah um oh if the amount of a hit roll for an attack made with the blade is a six it does three hits instead of one mm. and i'm trying to be doing is that a three, oh yeah hang doing... on it's here Add D3 to the attacks to... of his hammer or blade if he made a charge. Okay, so you could you could be getting three damage three. Sorry, you could yeah. If yeah, you roll the, the six, hit roll you'd be, is a six. If you roll the hit roll of a six, you'd be doing you'd be doing three hits at plus one damage. No, it'd only be one of them. Ah, uh, okay. Because you the hit you rolled a six on, you didn't <coughs> roll a six on the other two because you didn't roll a dice. So it's. It yeah, doesn't yeah. like that. So I, I think you'd go for the the hammer just because it wins on a two rather than on a four. Sure. So, um, yeah, yeah, more reliability. So, cool. Um, Hallowed Knights, which gives you a six up ignore spell. Um, you can use a command ability. Add one to run and charge. Uh, and you can run and still charge. So that might be useful. Yeah, not have a herald or because it means you don't have the need to herald or and you get plus one to both. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um plus you've got two Star Drakes and the Herald Draw can only do one. So Yeah, very good point. Um oh, you've got drink. a command trait mark strength. Uh, if the general's slain in combat on a two up, he can pile in attack of all his weapons for his removed from play. Yeah. So you kill the Star Drake, he still gets to fight. Uh and then you've got an artifact is in the hero phase heal a wound allocated to the bearer. Yeah. Yeah, so, they're, they're all really good. That sounds like a front runner. Yeah. Um Celestial Vindicators, reroll hit rolls of one for Vindicate units to the charge. Uh, use a command ability of hatred, add one to attacks of many weapons. If it's uh, charged, I believe. There's loads of words. I'll read it in a bit. Um, each time you roll, and you've got a trait, command trait, each time you roll a hit roll of a six, add one to the damage. So, and then you've got a artifact, add two to attacks the weapon. And if you do subtract one from save rolls of the bearer, so it's like you get two attacks but minus one save. Anvil obviously allows you to um, attack Shoot with again. missile weapons or pile an attack with melee weapons. It's not a bad option. So it allows but you to fight as unit? well as any held and anvils of held and hammer unit wholly within nine or eighteen, depends if it's a general or not. So, so that's that's anything in the army. Yeah, including the drake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um I, uh... you've also got the trait is minus one bravery of enemy units within six and mm. the artifact is at the end of the combat phase roll of dice for each enemy model that's allocated wounds on a three plus to take a mortal wound so that's awful um and you can re-roll battle shock tests for your army so real battle shock test is not to be underestimated in the type of army that you'd be taking because your drake's going to end up in the thick of things and quite a long way away from people and we're not gonna have many heroes around so potentially not bad mm -hmm. um knight's excelsior is i don't think it's as good as the other stuff i mean we can skip it then there's plenty yeah. of good options in the book. there's a lot that's the problem uh war bringers <laughs> um you can redeploy stuff so you can D3 units, you can redeploy, then you get the Astral Conjunction. Um, 
add one to cast, do no, I go pass that one. No. <laughs> Stormcast gets a redeploy <laughs> for being Stormcast kind of anyway. Mm, yeah. Sort of, yeah. It's yeah. a bit different. But um you've got Tempest Lords on a four up you get an extra command point. Um so it's okay. Use a command mm-hmm. ability, uh re roll wound rolls of one, which is useful. <laughs> Um, and you've got a command trait, add one to wound rolls for the melee weapon of the general warriors within six of any other Tempest Lord unit. And then I have a question. What about Storch Defender and stuff like that? Where does that come from? It's the generic stuff. So you don't get that if you're in a chamber? No, unless you've got a formation. It's a trait. I think it's a generic trait, so you need to just go, I'm not, I'm not anything. But it doesn't do what you think it does. It's not, oh. it's not the same anymore. Oh. Um... So you've got the Patrician's Helm. If the bearer's on the battlefield, each time you spend a command point on a 5-up, you get a command point. So it's quite good if you if you actually want to use a lot of command abilities. Yeah, I think you're better um, off taking something that gives you a command ability that's super useful, like attacking yeah. twice with a drake or shooting I think twice an- with Anvils a has been a standout for most armies because yeah. you can use it in so many different ways. Flexible, um, yeah. I do quite like the Hallowed Knights on the drake, though. If I'm looking at that. Um, so in terms of Storch Defender, that's the other, if you go vanilla. So yeah. you go vanilla Stormcast. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of book flicking in this because I'm not familiar with this book and it's massive. It's got so much in it. it? <coughs> yeah, of the artifacts seem to be hidden away somewhere. Um, so command traits is staunch defender add one to save rolls that target stormcast units wholly within nine of the general if that unit has not made a charge so it's okay but i don't i don't know if it's that necessary it doesn't gel with the army as well it stops you from being having the aggro option doesn't it you 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 give up the ability to do a lot of cool stuff oh and yeah ambles is just you know, if someone puts down a screen in front of your Drake and that stops you from being able to romp into combat, you want to be able to get rid of the screen. Yeah, yeah I do. I do quite like the Hallowed Knight one, especially when you, if the general dies, you could just pile an attack before it's dead. Yeah, I mean that's cool, pretty, pretty amazing, right? I mean, absolutely. Because it just Presumably means he would uh, come in at like uh, <coughs> the lowest. When something like that happens, he should he comes in at the lowest monster tier. But his his weapons but don't get any worse. The only thing so... that goes down oh, yeah. is the Great the Claw hit roll. Yeah. And it goes from yeah, three to a well. four. <laughs> All right. So basically, the only it doesn't really make any difference, because I think it only really affects his movement, looking at this. Okay. And his Great Claw attacks. So his, him on top, he doesn't get affected. But you've got all these special rules with, like, the Cavernous Jaws. After he makes a parlin move, so that would that would trigger. Yeah. Um, and I think he's got the tail, hasn't he? Which probably wouldn't trigger, yeah. but let me just double see where I can see that. Seems like this war scroll looks maybe I'll sweep him tail. Each time he attacks, roll a dice for each enemy to be free. Oh, so it's Yeah, so he would get that as well. So the tail and the jaws would trigger as well. So you get those on top. So you're not really losing much if he's no. being killed. Um, you know, then you've got the, you've got the ability to ignore, I know it's only on a six, but ignoring a spell on a six plus to ignore the whole spell is pretty good just on your whole army. I know it's only a one and six, but if you get hit by like, you know, a gateway or something and you just pop a six, you're like, oh, don't have to worry about that then. (laughs) You know, like it's, uh, it's pretty good. Um, I don't know. Like I, I know anvils is like the default, but. I, I do quite like I do quite like in this list because it allows you to fight with like the Star Drake first and the other one can wait and if he dies you can still fight. So yeah. it is an interesting choices with your activations. Um Yeah, not sure. I would really like a formation just because I'd like to have a second artifact and a mount trait. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to fiddle now, but I don't know. Basically, the the point at which I've started is I've put in. It would it's weird to not have a wizard, <laughs> but obviously <laughs> when you when you're going this hard on a theme, and it's a pretty resilient army against wizards mm. as well because of various reasons. Your star drakes 
your star rates are going to debuff your opponent's casting by one. <coughs> You've got potential to bounce spells or, or not be affected on a six. Stuff like that. You could just be in the sky. You know, can't shoot something if you can't see it. So maybe, maybe you don't need one. I just bash some stuff into a list quickly. You need two Star Drakes, a Castellan, and Encantor. So there is a wizard in there. Ten Judicators, five Judicators, and five Libs is seventeen fifty. Um, obviously, okay. the ten Judicators would be if you were going Anvils. If you weren't, you would absolutely have them in two different units because you may as well get two champions out of it. Because mm. the champions yeah, are yeah. so 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 good. You end up with quite. If it's it... not as prohibitive as I thought. No, I would. I would be tempted to try and do something around the mortal wound AoE stuff. I'm yeah, I'm just putting in a prime. <laughs> so all gas, I, no breaks. Off we pop. <laughs> yeah, well I'm I'm tempted. Ooh, that's let's, cool. <laughs> let's bin that off. Right, okay, uh, let's go for this. He's only three hundred points, isn't he? Oh, guys, six drops, Star Drake, Star Drake, Prime, 10 Judicators, 10 Judicators, 5 Liberators, 1950, Bash and a Command Point. Off you pop. I'm going a little bit more Renegade. More Renegade than Star Drake, Star Drake, Prime. I'm all in. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This, this is going to be... This is the AoE um, superhuman uh, destroy army. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, so, right. it. uh, it's, it's two units of five Judicators and five Liberators. Okay. <laughs> the Everblaze Comet. Yeah. yeah. A Knight Encanter. I'm just a Celestant Prime. The Knight yeah, Vexler yeah. with the AoE Mortal Wound Banner. <coughs> and two Star Drakes. So the idea of this is you literally just bomb them with Mortal Wounds. How many drops is that, Russ? Is it seven? A lot. <laughs> Is it, is it a lot? Eight. Eight drops. Eight, but that means you get more in the sky, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you can it, put the squishy yeah. things in the sky that you care about. Yeah. But the, the good thing about like the the Knight Encanter obviously has the uh spirit flask as well. So like you can yeah. run in and blow them up. Um you've got double I mean obviously I haven't picked any artifacts, nothing, so I'm just I'm just going through like what the rules do. So like the the Everblaze Comet allows you to. Oh, if people stand close together, they get screwed. I just gonna... wrote white. Just wrote like that list in my previous list had a baby. I think it did that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and all I did was just went well. I don't care. I mean, like you could even drop down the. Um... I've got enough heroes. Yeah, I haven't gone over cap. No, I was just looking at that. Um... Yeah, so the everything's called the same thing, knight or lord, right? Knight Vexler. <coughs> so meteoric standard. Um, once per battle in your hero phase, pick a point in the battlefield twenty four of this model. Each unit in two d six takes d three mortal wounds. So like, that's pretty good. A zero. I do love a zeros. Um, mm -hmm. he's he's a bit delayed, but if you want to make the most of the star drakes, um. Rerolling their ones to hit automatically might be a thing, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and he's a he's a flexible hero. He's not a wizard though. Um, so I've I've written what would be my list on this theme, one hundred percent, I believe. Uh, Star Drake, Star Drake, Prime, Encantor, ten Judicators, five Liberators, five Liberators, Comet, nineteen eighty points, seven drops. Um, so the difference is you don't have the Vexler. Yeah, so drop the Vexler and uh, the Judicators. Ten, yeah, 10 Judicators. You, you can't take 10 Judicators, 5 Judicators, that pops you just over. But you get a chance for Triumph as well. I think being under with a list like this is pretty good. Like, if you got any of the triumphs is amazing. Reroll hits, reroll wounds, or reroll saves. Because yeah. Star Drake for saves, or hits or wounds, and then Judicators for hits or wounds is just, it's just legit. And yeah. so, kind of yeah, I, could... I would go Hallowed Knights with this because you drop the Heraldor. Good point. Um, so I don't. Do you, do you I don't then drop ten duties. I don't even think like the Judicators. Like, I don't even think their shooting is good enough to warrant like even shooting twice with them. Like, the, they sound Judicators sound way better than they actually are. 
Like you don't have, yeah, you you don't. It's not that they're amazing. It's that they are the shooting option. Their shooting is also mm. very long range. It's like it, it's like everything in Stormcast. It's not vast quantity of attacks or anything. It's just solidly slightly above average quality, and that's it. But I um, you know, four turns of shooting out of them out of two turns would be enough to do some stuff. Yeah. Um, you, you could be right though. The the run and charge might be a good one, and not taking them liberators are so much cheaper. It opens up quite a lot. You could well, take an army with it. It gives you another hundred block. points, so it, yeah, you could then put in the lord another hero because why not? When you <laughs> you could put a relictor in for for translocation. So you, I think I think you can translocate in the hero phase. So you'd be able to translocate the vexler banner, then drop the bomb where you wanted it. It's all very <clears throat> silly, but <laughs> <laughs> sounds great. Um, It'd be very confusing to play against. Like it, it isn't shit. I'm fairly sure because you, you know, have to do it in the hero phase, right? So your the prayer. Let me just double check it. Uh, translocation in your hero phase. Pick a friendly stormcast unit. Hold over nine of the priests on a free up. Remove it from play. Put it anywhere on the battlefield. Nine away from enemy units. So you could do that, or you could just move one Star Drake and use the command ability on the other to run and charge. So you could literally just have no judicators, you have three units of five libs, and just literally <laughs> it's, it's mortal wounds, or it's Star Drake buffing, or we don't care. Yeah. Um, it is very silly, but the prime and double Star Drake <coughs> is pretty appealing, with never oh, plays comment. Your opponent would have to deploy like this. <laughs> Otherwise, I guess if, if anything was next to anything, all of the things would be dead. Or but you could almost move it like a mobile artillery battery because, like, the prime could come down, the banner could go, both the star drakes could go, and the comet could go down. You could literally wipe out half of their deployment zone and then just literally, like, well, actually, now I just go and get. You've still got two <coughs> star drakes on the table. Yeah. And the prime. Point. Like and the prime could come down a bit later if you wanted. Um, is the Vexler banner worth it because it, it's only once a game and he is a drop, and you could have more in one of your infantry units? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, you could change him out to a Castellan, and then it gives you plus one save on a Star Drake if he's there. I I like it just because it's like an extra D three. Yeah, so like, it it's like does exponentially increase. You're just getting rid of probability. If you're doing it? like, like you D3 from here, the banner, D3 from the comet, D3 from um, the prime, that's 3D3 mortal wounds. It's so much better than 2D3 mortal wounds. I know it's once per game, but you only need to do it once per game to... I mean, it's a 2D6 radius. I mean, you might roll low, but it's... No. You've got rain of stars for the D3s as well. Yeah, and you've got two rain yeah. of stars, so... Like it's, I just think like if you were if you're leaning into it, I just literally pick something that does the same thing slightly different. Nah, you <clears throat> you're right. There's it's a good point. Um, I'm not going to upset you by adding Hellstone rocket batteries in. Or something. I mean, the other <laughs> option you could do. <laughs> and, well, well you, no, the other option you could do <laughs> is drop the Vexler, drop the Everblaze, drop the Encanter, and Drake Swan Templar. <laughs> Oh, 90 points over. So if I drop the two judicators down to liberators, you could also you could swap one of the you could swap one of the um oh, the second the... star drake to so you have one drake and two drake swans. Uh, just get rid of those judicators, don't you? Though? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to see if uh, the rocket batteries are. Are we going to so... end up with four star drakes and three units of liberators? <laughs> Well, no, we're, I'm not, we're three Star Drakes, a prime and three new celebrators. 1990. <laughs> <laughs> is, I like the sound of, no, I, I like I like the sound the of the mortal wounds. Yeah, I like that one. That would be mine. If I'm going to pick one, that would be mine. There you go. It, like, <clears throat> I guess the, so the, this is a good point to have got to. Let's run through in our heads how that would play on the table and see if Tom is happy with the idea of how it would play. And then we can tweak it one way or, you know, if it's like that's too much shooting or that's not enough combat or, you know, wh whichever way it is, then we can see if it tweaks. So how, how do you imagine that playing on the table, Russ, in turn one? 
Okay, so let's assume your opponent. This is the good thing about this, right? So the opponent's like, you can go first. You're like, great, I've got a run and charge, Star like Drake, a chance to translocate the other guy so he can be nine away. Um, let me just put the list back together. So uh, relic to I wanted. So it's relic to the translocation. Yes. Yeah. And if you translocate, um, yeah, yeah, that's a good option. Oh my god, so many heroes. Uh, three, four, six, still not capped. That's good. Libs, libs. <clears throat> it's 1990. No, 1900. Oh, everybody's comet. That's what needs to go in. And this is seven drops. Uh, let me finish doing it because it's slightly different. So, everybody's comet. Have I got the encounter? Build so it to encounter yet. So, it is six heroes and three core, so it's nine drops. Nine. So. Okay. It's about, it's about average then. Six, I've got so, six heroes in your mentalist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I have. I mean, you could. No, you don't. You're not going to do that. Yeah. So, um, the idea. I guess you'd go scions. So you could put half the units in the sky, right? So what you wouldn't put in the sky, you wouldn't put the Vexler. Relic to, depends what you're facing. This does. Encanton needs to be on the table. Prime goes in the sky anyway. So you've got three on the table. You could put one Liberator on the table, two in the sky with two, st well, both Star Drakes in the sky if you wanted to. Probably not. So I imagine you might put no, a you're... Star Drake in the sky. Just to screw your opponent. Because your opponent would be like, well, you can drop anywhere and be nine away and make the charge, and the other one can run and charge, and you've got you're a giving... way to redeploy it. <laughs> You're giving up your reign of stars, though. Actually, no, because no, it's in... end of movement, and then you yeah. do it at the shooting phase. So okay, yep. Um, so I think I'd go hallowed knights for that for the reasons we said. Um, Run in charge reasons for the fight if you're dead reasons. Yeah, and then yeah. your you've obviously got the cast off the banner. The guy is very important, like the of the encounter. Mm -hmm. Um, so. I think you can up your casting by one with Star Drakes. They've yeah. got that that manipulation of the cast yeah, roll. So I, I guess you have like Star Drake at, le at least one Star Drake here, and then you mm -hmm. have your caster behind them, out of range of any dis enemy dispel. Yeah, because the range of Comet is so far. Or you'd then put you'd be... them in range for the ultra to upgrade, <coughs> depending on what you're worried about. But I'd probably out of range if you're. Yeah, it depends. It depends what you're well, facing. You can... but... Yeah, if yeah, if you're um. You're going to be able to move up on. You just spread out. I think you put as many Liberators in the sky as you can for later game objective capture. Because they can't get killed there. <laughs> no. And the, you probably put a Star... You might put a Star Drake in the sky, you might not. Um, and then what you do is you basically, on your first turn, the idea is you would Everblaze Comet, translocate the Vexler, drop the Banner, drop the Prime, do the scepter, double reign of stars, try and run and charge and pin their army with a star drake. Um, and then the liberators are just there to blob on objectives. So it's very silly, but if you <laughs> if you kill a key thing doing this, then it's gonna be amazing. And the prime can auto charge as well, nine away, if you use his ability. So if he comes down a little bit later <clears> on. I just love the idea of a, a list where the majority of the time the prime just doesn't bide as time whatsoever, and there's just turn one <laughs> like pew 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 pew. Well, I mean, I that's how I used to use the prime. He used to come down yeah. on turn one, and he used to just to be a boomstick. Yeah, but you can afford to be patient because you don't need. Depending on the scenario, you don't need to do your big boom until late game. You could even put the vexer in the sky, oh, and then save it, and then bring him down later on, and just be like, "Well, he's in terrain. He's got a two up save. You got to deal with him, or you're getting boomed." You know, like, yeah. and it's, um, I think the double rain, I mean, the Star Drakes are horrifically scary anyway, and you've got two of them. Oh, we get Mount Trait. What do we get for the Mount Ooh. Trait? Ooh. Forgot about that. Does um, that sound about what you'd enjoy, Tom? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just it's like, not, it's just dropping it's, bombs. Yeah. And I think that from my, like, from, from certainly for the way, <clears throat> the way I play, like, if anything, is involves too long a like lead time or too long a like execution time. I'm gonna yeah. it's just more opportunities to make it go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like if you you've got a uh, two plans for if your opponent takes first turn and doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or if you get to pick, in which case you get to you know 
you get to pick either way. Yeah. Right, but it also sounds like you can, like, it's not an auto, like, this is the exact thing that I would do every single game, regardless of what you're okay. against. You do change, you, it sounds, you know, you would change you, things up yeah. slightly depending on what Where you pin would be really interesting, because you could just rock straight into the front, let's say your opponent's army's here, your <laughs> army started on the board, they're here, probs. <laughs> Um, you could just rock it one star break in, try and get the other one, you know, as close as possible, and try and hold them up while you've got like liberator, liberator, liberator at yeah. the back. You could do that, or in you know, in in some scenarios, there might be something that's way over here. In which case, you just completely anchor one flank, and they have to deal with the star break or run away from it. Yeah. And the moment someone's running away from your monster, you get to charge again with it. Yeah. <coughs> which is quite an interesting prospect, really. Yeah. And you get to scream only the faithful and chuck um, <laughs> wound counters out of a bag and go lightning bolt, lightning bolt, <laughs> lightning bolt, which is the um, most important thing of the, the life. Um, <laughs> it sounds really cool. Comet is damagey as well. I think we've probably not given enough specific. Do you know what Comet does? We should probably Basically. talk about it because people watching yeah. might not know. So Russell give the specifics. It's six the cast when it should be a seven, I believe, or something stupid like that. Thirty six <laughs> inch range. I'm going a cappella here, so correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't thirty six inch. All right then. Oh, hang on. I believe spells, I believe it? all of these are correct that I'm saying. Let's just say they are. Thirty six inch range, um, or something mental, which means it's one of the only spells in the game that you can safely cast from outside of the spelling range, um, <laughs> and still hit your target. Um, six to cast, which again is too cheap. And if you've got a star drake there, that means it's effectively a five to cast. Yeah. Okay, still thumbs up. And then it does D6 mortal wounds. Mm, no. After it's set up, roll a dice for every enemy unit within 10. On a one to two, yeah. it takes one. On a three to four, it takes D3. On a five to six, it takes three mortals. And then at the start of each battle round, roll a dice for each unit within five. On a one to three, it takes one. On a four to six, it takes D3. And you've got minus one from enemy wizards that are within five. So what you do is you drop it. You're outside of unbind range. So you want to set your encounter up last, basically. Mm -hmm. And then what you do is you go, right, it's going to hit here. And it does damage immediately. But then when you go into the turn, it does damage. So if you go second, you're going your turn. And then you're going to go straight into a round. So technically, you can set it up so you double ding people, and then in your go, you can kind of like you can either leave it or you can unbind it and then cast it the next turn. Um, it's it's nice to not mind about the turn roll. You know, if they get it, you're like cool. <laughs> Here's some more. Um, is it does it damage every unit within ten rus or is it enemy units? It says um, uh, each unit. Okay, but you know, Star Drake's have got more wounds than most things. But you're not, you're not going to be near it when you drop it, and then you can where you place it. It's such a long range; you can just do it so it just pings the things you want to hit, not yeah. you. And then, I'm like... just thinking that Tom, Tom might get a first done and run straight to the action. <laughs> yes. very, Are you basically very... like playing catch with the encounter <laughs> and the Star Drake? So you throw the ball, and go get the ball, go get the ball, and it's like go get the ball. Um, it. Yeah, so that's the Everblaze Comet is is sweet. So um that to probably, you know, on average you're gonna get five D three Reign of Stars, five times D three damage from Reign of Stars from both your Drakes. Um the reliability of the Vexler banner, <clears throat> which you know is isn't a cast or anything, you're just gonna get that, you're gonna get it once, but you're gonna get it. Mm -hmm. And then the Prime as well, and he's got the ability to change one of his dice so if you don't get the range you want on his boomstick which is d6 from a point i believe d3 mortal wounds you can turn that to a six and guarantee a 12 inch yeah blob so you know you can pick one point on the table and ruin it and yeah. then chase it with star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> the mortal wound yeah. output is pretty ridiculous i think um you might struggle if people got lots of like cheap bodies <laughs> but then star door, drakes so. are amazing at killing those units yeah Lots um, of cheap bodies, though you still get to you get to ping off the things that are this. And the other thing is, if your opponent's got small units, your battle line is actually more relevant against them. Because yeah, stormcast battle line is pretty tasty. Yeah, but I I think it'd be fun. 
Like, I'm not it saying would. it's going to be amazing, but like it would be a lot of fun playing with that. And you've still got two <clears> dragons <throat> to play around. So I I just think like it gives you something else to do, like another way to do damage. And I think you could put points into shooting yeah. and go anvils, command ability. So that's then got a cost. But you've then like you've got a range that's a little bit less static, well. and then you're like, oh, I need a heraldo now because I want running charge, and then both you could just use a command ability and held anvils. Uh, sorry, uh, hallowed knights. Plus the fact yeah. you've got the chance that on a six you don't care about your own comet hitting you, so you, know, <laughs> you can gamble. You can really play that that one and six. Um, is it is it an issue that if you are gunning for that pin, you would need a can a command ability for the six on the run? And the uh, six for run and charge. Uh, potentially, but I mean, like you, you can just. I I think you can be patient with this army because you, I don't, I don't think you that. need to pin them on first turn because like the ranges are so big and you can put stuff in the sky, and the star drakes are resilient and they do their range of styles is no range on it. Yeah, so I don't think right. you need People to even. To I think you could literally on the first turn just like rain of stars, rain of stars, comet, have you go, like done. Like just yeah. just spread out cap objectives yeah, right. and go, you'll go, because you don't need to alpha strike. You don't need to charge them on turn one. I went for the trait live limbed on the mount because it gives you plus one move. Oh, yeah, nice. It's like a thirteen yeah. inch move, and then like That's you can run and charge. And, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, but you don't. I think um, I just think it's cool. Like it's interesting. It cool. It's different. You know, I you could put like bolt throwers in and snore, or like a big unit of shooters snore, and then just run anvils, which is even boring. <laughs> um, and just go, yeah, I'm going to shoot you. Or you could drop comets of lightning on people. Like that's way more yeah. fun. Yeah, this this feels a bit more like a load of the things we've suggested are things that you get in Beast Claw, for example. It is more, <laughs> you know, like run and charge or fight if you die or stuff like that or feck, you know, yeah. kind of gribbly themed. And, that, and not bad options. And that's why, like, even if they come in and charge your Star Drake and kill it on the first turn, he still gets to fight. Yeah. So you might still get to hit someone. So it's fine. <laughs> then your awesome. your wizard can run in and, and like d like suicide vial with the spirit flasks and be like, ah, take my <laughs> take my magical lightning. Yeah, it's bottles. a good point actually. If someone comes <laughs> at you, you're gonna have a fun time. If someone does bunch, I would absolutely be tempted oh, you just to turn one, try and pin them, and just hold them there, even if the units you're holding them with get blasted with a comet. You know, just. Um, one of the things with the drakes as well, which is like really undersung, is how good the bites are. Because with two drakes as well, you oh, can yeah, fight. You can fight with one and bite. They pile in and attack. Then the other one just bites, so they break coherency. And you're like, don't matter now. I mean, like you can literally. I reckon you could delete a unit of thirty witch elves in one turn, not even breaking Definitely, a sweat. Yeah. Like double, double, double Lord Celestin. And you've got the mortal wound bounce back. They've got a free up save anyway. You've got a you've got an encounter that once you can even you try and get Mystic Shield off. You've got the relic of the healing. Um, you've also got the Redactor for the damage and the minus one to hit as well, if you get that off, if, after you could translocate yourself and then do that. Um, I mean, the Vexler banner, it gives you reroll charges, so it's not terrible, because you could just run up the table and reroll the charges. Oh, that's fair, yeah. And, like, he's also, um, he doesn't, he doesn't need to, like, because he, when he does that ability, that meteor, you, 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 you don't need to worry about him running or not running. So if it's in the hero phase, you chance they can drop the ban drop the banner, then he can run to a position where the Star Drakes are gonna get reroll charges. So like one dropping from the sky, nine with a reroll, <coughs> and the other one running up the table with a with the command ability, then getting plus one, plus two to move, plus one to charge with a reroll on the charge. Probably gonna be up the table anyway. Um so you might need a bigger charge, but you're gonna get plus one and a reroll. So it might be like two nine inch rerollable charges on double Star Drakes. So but I no, think your <laughs> opponent would have to think about the possibility of you doing it, which is why it would be disruptive. Yeah, and, and at the same time, like you, you don't really have much on the table then for them to go at if you've put those liberators up in the sky and you're just like, well, I don't, I don't need them. I don't care it? about them. It's four characters. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, if you think from a painting point of view, that would be quite fun. Because yeah, you've dragon, got like dragon four heroes, like two big dragons, a prime, three heroes, and then three units of five libs. Yeah. It'd be awesome in hero missions. I mean, 
Duali. <laughs> I'll put one on yeah. each. Go on then. Yeah. I mean, how often do you, have you ever seen someone with two star drakes? Yeah. People, they've not gone in the middle, have they? They've been like one or four. Yeah. Maybe this is this is undiscovered secret tech that we are working out here. Double dragon lightning ball. This is the... Yeah. <laughs> it's like the... It's amazing. I want to do it's it. It's an anime now. army, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You it's just, just like everyone just goes like, come with an epilepsy warning. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. like, beware, this yeah. hero phase will cause you to have fits. So, because um, I'm about to drop some lightning. Um, <laughs> no, I like it. I guess get 2,000 points on the nose. I've always wanted to do a list that drops lightning bolts like that. So I'm very happy right now, as you can probably tell. I really need to have a break. <laughs> 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 so um, that's the double dragon list that we come up with i know i kind of steamrolled my idea through but it's my show no I'm <laughs> <laughs> no but you can see that i think it's viable you know yeah i mean you could do differently with anvils and shooting instead of the the magic and the comet but i think the i think the like the bomb is more exciting really like in terms of in, and 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 like you said it's got that like kind of threat of disruption of like when are you gonna do it? And yeah. like do and you're gonna be doing a bit of it every turn anyway. Yeah. And then you can do yeah, exactly. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Pretty, pretty so all you've got to do now is paint it, Tom. <clears throat> I don't even yeah. I don't need, I'm trying to work out what do I even need to buy for that. Probably I nothing, right? Buy, I might <laughs> a Vexilla. I think that's <laughs> the only thing I need. I've got the rest of it. <laughs> you, there you go. Twenty pound army, bargain. Yeah. <laughs> just convert him out of a uh, out of a uh, what are they called paladin with the sticks, you know the ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The oh, I have the got plenty of stuff I can convert with him. Yeah, I'm just put mm-hmm. a convert your banner. The hardest part is going to be converting a star trek, probably, because I yeah. think their the the pose for the star trek is such a striking pose that two of them. I think would be they, they look like gargoyles or statues, wouldn't they? If they were you you have to convert it, yeah. I think the we've got actually in our in the Realm Hammer competition, someone did a converted pose Star Trek, didn't they? In our yeah. Discord, oh, nice. So. You can hide a lot because they're armor panels. If you don't use those armor panels, you can get away with a lot of mess underneath those that you then hide. Yeah. Um, and if you're willing to, you know, use other bits of other things and put armor panels on shoulders or whatever, you can actually probably take their limbs and reposition them better than you'd yeah, expect. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, you could just cover a shin if there was some repositioning there or <clears throat> yeah, the nice thing about things. I think the challenging, the, the hardest part is the way the wings are. It's very tailored to the pose it's in. Like, you just, can't have it, you can't have it, like, if you imagine like splayed out like that yeah. because the wings are they're different shapes from each other and they're very like closed off yeah i've been thinking, a lot, I've been whatever, thinking a lot about how i would what scratch about build the new the bellicor wings, wings. yeah because yeah. they're quite I mean, they've got chains on and they're probably bellicor. separate Screw it, Tom, and you, you could use bellicor half, without just... the wings as a demon prince <laughs> yeah. You don't do things by halves, Tom. Just whack Archeon's wings on it. Be fine. Didn't you buy two Archeons? I do have two Archeons. <laughs> so you have spare Archeon wings. <laughs> You're an idiot. Do you know what you do? You know what you could do? You could do a chaos, a chaos themed Stormcast army, and have two Archeons as the two stars. Oh, drinks. you could paint. You could paint a black. Then black Stormcast looks so good. You yeah. could do like a black, great traditional <laughs> it would chaos. Be the ultimate meme army. for like. The, the the hallowed knights being made out of chaos models and being painted black <laughs> like only the faithful but not really uh yeah so plus Gardas is coming soon so you could use that formerly model. the faithful yeah we've seen that i don't know like hallowed knight stormcast plus i, I think silver armor would be super quick to do as well if you do yeah. it with like you know like vallejo metal color or whatever and washes and stuff like that you can do some really cool stuff I even use flip paint I'm... Yeah, I've got my metal, my, my silver metal, like technique that I'm really happy with, which is uh, scale seventy five black art, black metal. Mm. Then are uh, kind of normally a combination of druky violet and non iron wash, and then just dry brush it to layer aluminium, and it's kind of like at that point you can then, if you want gold, if you want like gold or bronze armor. Just <laughs> use contrast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just snake bite and, or the ended yellow contrast over the top, and you've already got yeah. gold then. Yeah. 
Just so to put rust in the recesses of that next to the purple, and it would look beautiful. Mm. Not on there. Uh... They're like pristine, <coughs> like angelic. They don't rust. Sigmarite doesn't oh. rust. Come on. You know that. I'd, track it. I'd be. I'd be doing something <laughs> like that if it was chipping me. medium and and covered in blood. Just, <laughs> just like a, a disgustingly beaten up group of stormcast. Yeah, correct. I, I, wizards. I had a kind of idea where I would paint all the stormcast, all the armor, like different colors. So it was almost like a, a rainbow, <coughs> as in like different <laughs> metallic colors. So it was yeah, almost yeah. like a uh, like, like a, a collection of metal, an unbound, an unbound kind of stormcast host where they've all come from. Almost moments. like they've they've had to like they haven't been able to get back to the anvil of apotheosis, and they've had to like retrofit their armor to stop them <laughs> leaking. Thing is, yeah. whenever I like think of stormcast, because I'm a big like Brandon Sanderson fan, I just think of like the stormlight leaking from the armor as they're getting battered and stuff. So I'd love to do an army that's all battle damage, but they've got like like lightning, like like glow oh, yeah. leaking. Yeah. I was really upset. A <clears throat> uh, bit of a tangent, but when stormcasts were revealed, they didn't have anyone normal faces. Yeah, and I was really upset when they had like human faces, and I was like, I really wish they had like hollow armor bit like Elfarian, like and, and like yeah. you could be actually there is no they are just animated suits yeah. um it doesn't really fit i guess what they want to do with stormcast but for me like i i like that idea it's why i quite like fowls and sons apart from painting them disclaimer yeah. um <laughs> i actually want to kill myself um no um there's a really nice piece of art where i don't know if it's in the, the new book i can't remember it was certainly in the original stormcast book where they didn't have their helmets on and all their hair was like basically yeah. like white lightning yeah yeah that looked really really cool i know the one i think it's in the it was in the original core book actually or in one of the realm books oh, uh, yeah i remember that one so it probably was because it's probably not, anything not canon books. anymore i'll have a quick flick through see if we can see it as we talk but <laughs> do we want to do another list or are we 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 happy to leave it there i know time's marching on and we've done quite a bit we can always we've got a live show we're going to do on sunday hopefully so we could do another one then if that makes more sense that's not a bad idea it live yeah i'm still quite keen about this book i'm waiting silver yeah we, is this the picture you were talking yeah. about where this guy's got his Zane yeah yeah hair. yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah how it kind of matches the sword as well i think yeah, it's just yeah. Really cool. yeah i mean, I'm, I'm curious you, you mentioned russ earlier on we can do a silver enough one now if you want but it's just whether or not we've got time because it's quarter six now so yeah maybe we can do, do it on sunday do it on sunday yeah yeah right. people silver enough list tech on sunday live yeah there you go we'll do that me and russ can go away and do some research i'll bring some i'll bring some allies <laughs> Star yeah, but yeah, I, I, I'm. I, 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 if you like the list, <laughs> then go buy it. No, uh, then drop <laughs> us a like. And if you have any um, army list text with a theme, don't just say a gloom spike list, but like, you know, actually have a theme or a model you want to use or something you want it to do, then pop it in the comments. Um, and what we'll do is we'll try and um, do a tech show on that at some point. And uh, yeah, we'll do some theory crafting. If people enjoy these sort of shows, then we might do these more of a live interactive thing with people So in the future. So um, let us know what you think. Um, and if you want more AOS content, then consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps us out. And uh, you can get more AOS content to your face. So thanks very much. And um, we'll see you all soon. Yes, next episode.